Some may say that Battlegrounds is just a game of luck. And some may say that the variance that Anomalies brings is a bit too high to consistently win. And I'm here to tell you that I've controlled these measly concepts such as luck and variance and I reached 15k with not a 60% win rate, not 70%, not even 80%, but 90% top 4 win rate. To put that into perspective, if I were to flip a coin 62 times, the probability that 90% of them or more will land heads is 1.48 times 10 to the negative 11. That's the same probability that you get struck by lightning 3 times in your life. This is how I beat Anomaly Meta. Rewind back to the start of the season, where only a handful of anomalies were released, I noticed one thing. I kept losing to one card. And it all started when I trash talked this card. Maybe this recurring nightmare card is not that good. 12 seconds later. That's right. Recurring Nightmare really turned out to be a recurring nightmare. Recurring Nightmare is a tier 7 card that basically transfers its body to another friendly undead when it dies, so it just keeps spawning during the combat. And you can imagine how this got out of hand when you played it with Moira or Titus. Because every time it died, it would create two more, which means eventually there will be like 10 recurring nightmares on their final undeads. And if you got unlucky and left a full board of recurring nightmares on their board, you would just die from whatever HP you were at. At this point, Champion of the Primus was Avenged 2, which anyone could have easily predicted to be the best card in the game, and tier 7 lobbies were still offered like every other freaking game. So I just kept getting one shot by recurring nightmare over, and over, and over again. I was just not climbing at the start of the season because of this stupid card. How was I supposed to hit rank 1 if I'm losing more than I'm winning at just 10k? I waited Blizzard's response to immediately fix this BS, and Blizzard finally delivered the change we were looking for. What? What the fuck? Following Blizzard's FU, I got one shot by recurring one last time. Oddly enough, because the champion nerf was so detrimental, recurring nightmare was not much of a problem anymore, so I was getting one shot out of nowhere way less often and could continue the climb with ease. Other than that, playing all oops lobby was basically playing solitaire, but hey, playing solitaire isn't that bad, right? Oh wait, they eventually removed them from high MMR lobbies. Man, I just wanted to play Solitaire for plus MMR, goddammit. And so with my Nemesis Recurring Nightmare paying way less frequently, I was finally able to hit 13k. A fair reward lobbies were still broken, even after they removed the lease, but because I was NA's best a fair reward player, I just got free plus MMR every time I got into one of these lobbies by staying on Tavern 1. The strategy involves just staying on 1 the whole game in order to farm triples, and then eventually using all the discoveries on turn 8 and turn 12 for huge power spikes. I made a video on this anomaly a while back if you want a more in-depth summary. Eventually everyone started to catch on, and then I got into this crazy 1v1 versus dog to see if he could take my title as NA's best affair reward player. Where we got into this crazy endgame with capped braggarts versus capped raggarts, but because I knew how capped braggarts heal damaged minions at that time, I was able to win despite him having Gukan's hero power. So if not even the one and only Dog Dog could stop me, it turns out that no one else in NA could. Because at this point, I only kept getting first. 35. I have not lost a single fight. You know how ridiculous this is? My streak from 13k to 14k was pretty disgusting, partially thanks to a fair reward lobbies being quite frequent. Looking at my HS replay data, I started at 12.8k MMR on September 9th and ended at 13.9k MMR on September 12th. Essentially, it took me less than 12 hours with an average placement 
of 2.3 to gain over a thousand MMR. I was mainly in a good mood, but also look at this monstrosity of a turn 7 board. I mean, is this not what your turn 7 boards look like? This is definitely normally no need to check my PC. By the way, my final board was so big that the whole lobby was constantly disconnecting and not able to play the game. Finally, I was able to hit 14k with the stupidest tier 7 game ever. It was a ghost lobby and I had a time saver start, tripling into a 7 drop on turn 7. And then I found the most essential card to have in this type of lobby, which was Elise. To do this. Oh, Elise? Oh, dude, Elise is so fucking gross. Yeah, I mean, they're free, so I'm like... Oh, god, no. You didn't go here. So? Or you want to go with this? Yo, I want to go with this. Go with this. Is it actually the same thing, though? Go with this. It's probably not. It's probably not. Oh, go with that. Oh, go with that. Oh, go with that. Dude, I won the game, man. Just, just do it. Oh, another? Oh! Oh! Okay, okay. oh. Mm. Into a barrier? Oh, into this? I mean, that's pretty good. I could just love this thing. I mean, you're free. Oh, Sea Witch for fun. Go and copy a Tempest here. And then you get Golden Tempest next turn. Oh, mm -hmm. we just do this. That's fine as well. Yeah, I may have a little bit to do with the damage cap being reworked. Shortly after 14k was rank 1 NA, which was cool and all, but I was not satisfied. I had to keep going. See, I've hit rank 1 NA in the past, and even rank 1 EU, so I had to go above and beyond. I needed to set more goals for myself. I needed to be the first person to hit 15k. Before I continue, I have to remind all of you that this many of you are not subscribed yet. Yeah, I'm looking at you. All you have to do is click that one red button and I'll be so grateful. Done? Okay, now back to the video. Some new anomalies were introduced, but none of them were particularly impactful. Except one. Dude, I'm actually fucking dead. Man, I'm just dead. Like, it's nine golds. Oh my god. I think I go offline. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Seriously. This is a huge deal because if I wanted to climb as consistently as possible, I had to avoid these high variance, unbalanced anomalies at all costs. However, because these were just released, they had an appearance boost placed on them for a bit, which made climbing a bit scarier than it should have been. Despite this, I was still having lots of fun. As I got higher, the most important thing to make sure I had was a good mindset. So every night when I streamed on Twitch, which you can check out by clicking the link in the description obviously, if I ever felt myself spiraling into tilt, I'll just stop for the day and proceed with a fresh mindset the next day. Some might call it a rage quit. We love Murgle. We love Murgle. Most fun card in the game. But I just call it my anti-tilt mechanism. After having a good streak of games, okay, it looks like investing in Cleve was not a mistake. I won!
I found myself extremely close to my goal at 14.9k MMR. I want you all to remember that 14.9k MMR isn't that high, but at this point of the season, the second highest person is sitting at 14k MMR. As a result, my MMR gains were honestly not that good. I was sometimes gaining less than 50 for a first, and for an 8th place, I would lose 140 MMR, which means that I would need 3 firsts to make up every single 8th. Thankfully, I only got 8th place twice this run. Once was when I faced an insane tempo sister board back to back. Isn't this so bullshit that I just fight sister gamers turn 8 and turn 9? Like, you, you literally cannot beat it. And the other time was a golden monkey lobby where just discover after discover were horrible. Finally, Beater Babbit delivered the fatal blow to end my misery. On the positive side, I was winning a lot with Hyrule Elementals. Oh, I'm already infinite. Okay. I just gotta sell um party at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. In that case, I don't need a fuel, right? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> I also had some wins with literally the worst comp of all time. Dude, tell me I didn't win. Tell me I didn't win. Dude, I'm I'm being chillin', no? I'm being chillin'. Oh! Wait, it's not over yet. Oh it's over, right? It's over? It's Jover? It's Jover! It's Jover! I won with the worst pop of all time! And now I was definitely starting to feel the pressure of being one game away from 15k. Especially when a viewer gifts literally over 100 subs to hit 15k on NA. What? Less mana, thank you so much for those 25 subs to even more regulars. Wait, wait, are you drunk? It turns out he in fact was drunk at 3am, but we take those for sure. Don't worry, he's a friend. One more game away from 15k, I got an anomaly that I've literally never played before. That's right, I've played 300 games of anomalies and this anomaly has supposedly been accessible since the start. And I've literally never gotten it. So with only theory by my side, I was a first or second place away from being the first ever to break 15k this season. Of course, I had to play the best curve in the game, which was Jeep Curve, and then I tripled into the best unit in the game, Adaptable Barricade, still having 5 gold every turn. And then I did something crazy. I won in the most creative fashion possible. Just kidding, I rolled into Gusty, into Rock Rock, into another Gusty, into another Rock Rock, and a couple of elemental surprises later, and boom, easy first place. Okay, I, I do admit, I had that game kind of spoon fed to me, but hey, that's just the power of money. I had the power of 100 gifted subs on my side. Yeah, I accidentally hit 15k, whoops. And there we have it. With the whole chat spamming OFC, I was the world's first to hit 15k with anomalies in the game. All it took was the 42% first place rate. This anomaly meta might be a bit hyrule but with enough time spent and patience, anything is possible. Who knows, after watching this video, you could be the world's first to hit 16k. I get a lot of questions on being heartstuck XMMR and the best way to get better, so I want to close with my best piece of advice. There's always a better approach to Hearthstone Battlegrounds than to blame luck and variance. It's so easy to say stuff like, I played that perfectly, but I only lost because I'm unlucky. Another good one that is common, this streamer is only highly rated because he's lucky. 
Instead of only focusing on how unlucky you are, the best thing you can do is assume that you've played wrong and find areas of improvement. Because no one, not even I, makes every single perfect decision. A final thank you to all that was with me on this journey. To all my regular viewers of my streams, and to the guy who gifted over 100 sub subs, to even the guys that are just there to type EU greater than NA, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all of you.